it's good to be here this morning. And uh, let me say I appreciate all the folks down at US Pipe, uh, Russell Norris, and all the folks down there that listened to us. We was down there this week, and a lot of them said, "Hey, we listen to you on the radio every Sunday morning." And of course, Braxton and Linda up and uh, the folks at Fairview, a lot of them listen ever. Uh, every week we got folks from uh, from here to Florida to uh, West Virginia uh, I'm telling you it's just a blessing uh, to hear all these people that uh, call us and tell us hey we hear you on the broadcast or we run into them uh, uh, and they tell us they hear us on the broadcast and now we've got another two that we're using brother Ken uh, works hard every week to get the message on YouTube you can get uh, my message, Brother Allen's message, you can get uh, Sister Loretta singing, you can uh, check on the upcoming events at the church, and uh, uh, there's just a lot of things there. They've got a daily devotion that Brother Allen does uh, every day, and uh, I, you know, it's just, uh, it's a blessing to be able to use this technology for the glory of God, and that, uh, and we want God to get all the glory uh, for everything that we do Amen. here at Pine View. In Acts chapter 8, we're going to begin reading with verse 14. While you turn and we're going to pray. Father, thank you for this time that we have this morning. God, we ask, Lord, one more time that you'd help us, God, to give you our very best. Lord, and then after we've given you our best, Father, would you clear our mind, give us clarity of mind and speech. Father, would you use us one more time. We pray for the anointing. Lord, without the anointing, it's all in vain. Father, help us to, obey, to be a blessing to our folks here and to our folks that listen in uh, on the radio and through YouTube. Thank you, God, for all that you've allowed us to do for the doors that you open. God, give us liberty, Lord, as we go through this next year. Lord, that we might be able, God, just to get the word out. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. All right, in uh, uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 14, if correctly read, reads like this, Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost, for as yet the, uh, he was uh, fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of Jesus, uh, the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simeon saw that uh, through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that uh, on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Now I want you to listen to this, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simeon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Now, if I had a thought or a text, it'd be this. Give me the power. Give me the power. Now, you know, there's a lot of folks today that want power, some of them different kinds. But, you know, I believe it ought to be a, a prayer of all of ours today if we children of God Lord, just let us have the power of God in our lives. Now, uh, you say, well, preacher, why would you pray a prayer like that? Because in this day that we're living in, we need the power of God in our lives. Amen. There's things that we, uh, come, uh, that we come in contact with every day of our life that we can't handle in ourselves. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of folks... Uh, 
uh, that have got in trouble by trying to handle things themselves when they should have turned it over to God and let God handle it to start with. Now, if you want to get in trouble in your spiritual life, you just start trying to handle things yourself. And it won't take you long till you'll get in trouble. But I want you to notice there's a, a few points here that I want to bring out, and I'm going to try uh, not to hold you long. But I, I want you to notice some points that the apostles uh, made uh, to Simeon, and he just didn't understand it. Num number one, they said, hey, it's not ours to give. They asked Simeon, said, where have you been, man? What? Uh, they said, we perceive that you don't know nothing about what you're talking about. And what they were telling him is this. Power of God is not ours to give. It wasn't uh, received by man, and it that can't be given by man. Amen. But then he began to tell him now, uh, tell Simeon some things about his life that he didn't really know. Now, if you go back and read the rest of the chapter, you'll find out that Simeon was a sorcerer. <laughs> And he had bewitched folks and through witchcraft and all this, he had deceived the church many, many times. And uh, listen, it wasn't about uh, uh, receiving Christ that Simeon was there about. It was about himself. He wanted to look big uh, to the people. He wanted uh, to have prestige. And he wanted people uh, to look at him uh, uh, even as a god. But I want you to understand something, folks. It ain't about me. And it ain't about you. It ain't about nobody but Jesus today. Amen. And until we realize that, uh, we're in Amen. trouble, folks. Now uh, listen, I come behind this stand. Uh, every Sunday morning and I try to preach the best message that I can but I want and I study all week long to try to preach to you on Sunday morning but without the power of God in that message it's all in vain and I understood that a long time ago and it do a lot of folks good I understand it don't matter how well we're taught it don't matter how well we're versed it don't it don't matter how much we study. Without the power of God, we can't teach, we can't sing, we can't pray effectively, and we can't preach effectively without the power of God. If there's ever been a time that we need the power of God in our lives and today, that we're living in today, I pray God every day, Lord, give me power, Lord, to resist the devil. Give me power how to live my life how the way you want me to live it. Lord, give me power how to get Stanley out of the way how so that you can be used how through me. And folks, without that, how we're nothing. Amen. 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 That's right. <laughs> Amen. Listen, if, if I had it in my power, every one of you would have power with God. But I can't give it. All I can do is tell you how to get it. Right. Now I'll tell you how to get it. Now I'm going to tell you something. Uh, the Lord laid out a pretty good recipe for having power of God in our life. Yes. What did he say? Our faith come by hearing right. and hearing by the word of God. And anyone on this to say that it's impossible without faith to please God. Now, number one in our life, if we're going to have power with God, we've got to have faith in God. And we've got to believe that God is God. That's what he said in Hebrews, that he was God. That's the first thing we got to do is believe he is God and believe that he will give to us what we need. Now, I'm telling you, folks, if we will trust in God, put God in His place, as God in our life, brother, then the power of God will naturally come in our life. Amen. But you can't Bless him. have power with God if He's not first in your life. That's right. I have preached this and preached it and preached it and preached it. But for some reason, folks just can't get a grasp on that you can't put God down on the lower right. rungs of the uh, rungs of the ladder yeah. and still expect God right, to bless in your life. If you ever intend on having power with God, 
Number one is you've got to put God first. Amen. Now, uh, uh, you know, the next thing you got to do is you got to put yourself where you really belong. Mm -hmm. And that is a servant of God. Amen. God bless you. And we can do a lot of things in life if we've got first, uh, God first in our life. But number two, we've got to realize our place. God sent me here as a servant. Now, uh, you know, there's a lot of pastors today, and don't get me wrong, I believe in pastoral authority to a point, but I also believe that this church is the governing body of this church. And I've got to put myself where I'm supposed to be. I'm a servant of this church. These deacons are servants of this church. We're not lords over it. Right. And when we get to the point, listen, y'all don't get quiet on me. When we get to the point to where we realize our place as a servant, Folks don't want to hear that word. They don't like that word servant. Because that simply means to serve. Mm -hmm. right. Now Susan has been good this past week about, man, she's brought my, play, I, my plates right there. She knows I was tired. She knows it didn't feel good. And she has took care of me this week. She's cooked, she's brought my plate right there in the living room, set them in the recliner, said, here, I know you're tired. So she's took care of me this week. But is she my servant? No, she's not, she's my wife. Right. And there's a difference. Yeah. Now, a servant would be somebody that I hired to come in and, and serve me. Or back in the days of slavery, it was people that, uh, that was placed in service for somebody. But let me tell you something. The moment I got saved, I became a servant. Mm -hmm. And I'm not my own anymore. Why, preacher? Because right. I've been bought with a price. Amen. And what a great price that I was bought with. It took the shed blood of the darling Son of God Amen. to buy me back from that sin that I was so enslaved with. Now, Simeon here couldn't understand that he was a slave to sin. Mm -hmm. He couldn't understand that the reason that he wanted all of these things for himself, he wanted this power and he wanted this prestige and uh, he wanted to do this witchcraft and all of this stuff. You say, preacher, you telling me witchcraft's wrong? I'm telling you it's sin. It's satanic mm -hmm. and there ain't nothing good about it. Your Ouija boards and all that you need. If you've got them in your house, you need to get rid of them. Because they ain't no good. They're satanic. Now I'm thinking uh, we need to get all this satanic junk out of our home and go back to serving God. And I, it would do us all good uh, to realize uh, where we're at now. Uh, but I realized uh, the night that I knelt in that altar of prayer and uh, the uh, Holy Ghost conviction came on my heart, and I realized that I was a slave to sin, that I could not change myself. I could do nothing uh, uh, to better myself and when I realized that I, and I said Lord I, I, here I am a sinner I, Lord I'm on my way to hell I, there's nothing I can do about it I, I'm headed to hell I, and the only thing that's going to help me I, is for you to come into my life I, Lord will you save me I, and brother something happened that night I, in that altar I, and I've never been the same anymore I, you see I was born with a prize I, the shed blood of my darling Savior I was applied to my heart. And I have never been the same anymore. I'm a servant unto him. And I want to tell you something. I serve gladly with joy. It's good to be a servant of the king. I can't think of nothing else. I'd rather be today than to be a servant of God. Amen. But you see, Simeon didn't understand that. But 
the disciples here told him, said, you're eating up with bitterness. You've got all of this junk in your life that's destroying you from the inside out. And you don't even know what's going on. Oh, if we could get folks today to understand what's going on in their life. Let me, and let me tell you something else. You didn't choose God. He chose you. There's a lot of folks. <laughs> there's a lot of folks I reckon that stick their chest out and they think they're so good at this and they're so good at that that they chose God and God owes them something for choosing Him. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I didn't choose him. He chose me. A old country boy, lost and I'm done without God. But he chose me. And I'm so glad that he did. Now listen, had it not been for the Holy Ghost conviction that day that he chose me, I would not be where I am today. Had it not been for him choosing me to carry the gospel, I wouldn't be able to preach this gospel. Let me tell Tell you something. We got a lot of mama sense and daddy. Uh, mama called and daddy said jobs out there today. But I'm going to tell you something. Unless you've been chosen of God and I preach the gospel, you'll never be able to preach it. Amen. Amen. Without the call of God in your life, you'll never be an effective man of God. Amen. Without God choosing you, you can't be effective. Samuel then come and said, I'll give you money. I'll pay you if you'll just give me this. Number one, God don't need our money. Amen. Amen. You say, well, preacher, you preach on tithing. That ain't yours. That's God's in your hand. Amen. Amen. <laughs> See, a lot of folks got that wrong, too. Yeah. They think that 10% is theirs. It ain't yours. That first 10% belongs to God anyhow. You ain't give nothing till you went past that 10%. Yeah. Now, yeah, you're welcome. Let me tell you something. I realize that what little bit of money that Susan and I put in this church I, I'm not expecting nothing for that money that I put in because right. I owe that to God in here. Right. Now, I realized a long time ago that you can put in all you want to, but unless you get something put in, you're in trouble. Right. It ain't about what you put in, it's what you had put in. Right. And that... <laughs> And that is the precious Holy Spirit of Amen. God. That You know, when Jesus applied that precious blood to my heart, that saved me. Yeah. But then something else happened the night I got saved. See, when all that sin went out, the Holy Ghost right. moved in. Mm -hmm. And he set up shop in my heart. And he sealed. Ooh, oh my goodness. He sealed me. You know, when the king would make an action, he had a ring. And he'd take that ring. If I can get this ring off, I want to show you something. He'd take that ring, and it had a seal in that ring. And he'd dip that in a wax that was especially made for that. And then when he... He would, it would be on a scroll, he would roll that scroll, he'd, they'd, uh, the scribe would scribe down what the king had to say, they would roll that scroll, and he would take that ring, and he would roll it, and he would seal that scroll. Okay, we talk about seals as a jar where mommy used to seal them, that ain't the type of seal he's talking about. He is talking about a seal that God placed when I, when he wrote my name down Amen. in the Lamb's Book of Life, and he took that seal and he sealed it. 
And he said, that's mine. Amen. See that imprint up there? See? Amen. They can't nobody remove that seal but him. That's right. So I'm going to tell you something. I'm sealed forever yeah. till the day of judgment I am sealed. I belong to him. He is mine. I am his. And there ain't a thing in the world that Satan can do about it because he can't put his grubby hands on that scroll. Amen. 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 He cannot get it. It is there in the hand of the master. Yeah. And he can't get it out of his hand. What did he say? You're in my hand. And that's what he was talking about. That scroll is in my hand. And no man can pluck it out. I'm sealed. I'm going home and there ain't nothing Satan can do about it. Glory to God. Give Jesus a hand. Amen. We're sealed. Simeon couldn't understand this. And along with that comes the power of God. Money can't buy. You know, there's thousands of people today that are trying to find peace through money. Yeah. They're going out and they're buying and buying and buying. They buy new cars, new boats, new homes, new this, new that. And you know what it does? It just makes them want more. Mm -hmm. When you get one thing, then you want something else. Mm -hmm. You see, we're a people that's never satisfied. That's right. But you know what? When Jesus comes in, and that soul satisfied. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me tell you something. It's like a drink of water to a thirsty soul. Right. Ooh, right. It satisfies. And I'm telling you, you can have peace in your life if you want it. We run around. God, it's gloom and doom we hear. But I got some good news. We can have peace in our life. A peace, the Bible said, that passes all understanding. The world can't understand it. The leaders of our nations can't understand it. But I'm telling you, Amen. until you know the peace of God in your life, you will never understand it. That's right. That peace of God was given to me. I wish I could pass it on to others, but I can't. They was telling Samuel, look, Samuel, we have peace in our life. We have all of these tools that God's given us so that we might better serve him. But we can't give it to you. You can't purchase it from us. We can't pass it on to you. It come through one, and that is through the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it can come no other way. You can work till you work your fingers to the bone. But you'll never have peace in your life. We wonder why. There's so much divorce today. It's because there's no peace in the home. Yeah. We wonder why uh, uh, there's uh, young people taking guns and going to school. It's because they don't have any peace in their life. We wonder why school teachers are sitting there afraid in their classroom. It's because they don't have peace in their life. Let me tell you something. Peace. Uh, let me let me say this. The love of God cast out fear. And I'm telling you, yeah. if you're running around scared to death, you need the peace of God in your life. Amen. Amen. My goodness, I'm in fast time. All right. You know. When any type of service is used for personal glory, it becomes sin in our life. And I'm going to tell you something. Sin separates us from God. Amen. 
If you wonder why you can't shout anymore, you might want to do some checking up. If you wonder why you can't shed them tears of joy anymore, you might want to do some checking up. If you wonder why you don't feel the presence and power of God in your life, it ain't the pastor's fault. It ain't the deacon's fault. It ain't uh, nobody's fault except your own. Our sins and our iniquities have separated us from God. That's the book. Now I'm going to tell you something. There ain't nothing you can do except get down on your knees and say, Lord, I failed you. Lord, I, I've done these things. I've had these thoughts. I've, you know, and uh, Alan brought out a good point the other night. We get out and say, Lord, forgive me what I've done, what I might have done, what I might not have done. Hogwash. We know what we've done. We know what that sin is in our life. We know what that failure is in our life. It'll be one of three sins. It'll be the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, and the lust of the flesh. They all come under one of those three packages. All right. Now, and we know what that specific sin is in our life. Preacher, how we know? Because the Holy Spirit points it out to us. Specifically. If we are saved by the grace of God. Now hear what I said. If we are saved by the grace of God and we sin, it is pointed out to us right then. Amen. If it ain't never pointed out to you, that's a good sign you need to go back to the original place, and that's to the altar. Amen. You need to get down sincere with God and say, Lord, I need to be saved, because if your sins ain't being pointed out, you ain't never been saved to start with. Right. Amen. Now, there's a lot of folks don't don't believe that, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, and I got her. I may have to finish this now. Listen. Today, more than any time in our life, he told Simeon, said, you're bitter, Simeon. You've got bitterness that's sprung up in you. You are bitter, and, and uh, uh, that's causing you a lot of problems in your life. Let me tell you something. I've never seen a time when folks were so bitter as they are today. They look for something to get mad about. Right. Amen. They look for something to get hurt about. Mm -hmm. They look for something uh, so, to find fault in somebody. You ain't got to look. It's there. <laughs> you ain't got to hunt it. It's there. And I'm sure if you'll look in your life, you'll see that it's there too. If you look in the mirror, you'll probably find the biggest fault in your life. There's nothing good about me except Jesus. Amen. We need to realize today that if we're bitter, there's something making us bitter. Right. And whatever that is that's making us bitter, we need to get rid of it. You know, you... It's a sad day in America when churches are split right down the middle. You got some wants this and some wants that, some wants this and some wants that. Why can't we just come together? Amen. You know what it would take for churches to come together? Bless you, Lord. Easy recipe. If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves. Amen. Amen. Get off the high horse. Mm -hmm. You ain't good as you thought you was. Mm -hmm. Get humble before God. And I'm talking about get humble. You can't serve God and be high-minded. All right. My people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. And I ain't talking about saying a prayer. Amen. I'm talking about praying. You know what happens when you get to really pray in a prayer? 
You find yourself praying for people that you don't even like. <laughs> and I know I have found myself praying for folks that I didn't even like, for folks that had hurt me, for folks that had abused me, that had misused me. But when I got where I ought to be with God, and I got down on my knees sincere with God, I found myself praying for them folks. And seek my face. You got to seek after God. You know, we want to sit here and say, Lord, here I am. Bless me if you can. <laughs> Would you please just shake me? I don't want to get up and do nothing, but please bless me. Bless you, man. Amen. Oh, if we would just seek God, if we would seek His will in our life and quit trying to do what we want to do and do what God wants us to do, oh my goodness, we'd find that it's such a joy to serve God. Amen. What did He say? And turn from their wicked ways. Lord, I want to serve you, but I really don't want to let this go. Let me tell you something. To repent means to completely turn and go in an opposite direction. The hardest thing in the world to do is when God points something out to you and says, this is sin for you to turn and go away from that and not do it anymore. But we want to keep coming right back to that sin. What was it he said that easily besets us? And the sin that so easily besets us. Every one of us have a sin in our life. We have that one point, brother, God bless. that Satan knows about. That's hard for us to get over. It's hard for us not to go back to. And he keeps bringing it up. And he'll, he'll show you a picture and say, oh, look in here, look in here. Remember when you done this. Right. And the next thing you know, we find ourselves easing back toward that habit or toward that pattern. God telling us all the time, turn around and leave it. But we just won't. He said, then will I hear from heaven. Not only will he hear from heaven, but he'll open the windows of heaven and he'll pour out a blessing that we can't contain. Amen. God has a blessing for us. God has a blessing in your life. Now, I'm not going to tell you that he's going to make you wealthy. I'm not going to tell you he's going to pay all your bills off. I'm not going to tell you he's going to give you what you want. But I'm going to tell you this. He will give you what you need. And it will help you to be a blessing not only to yourself, but to those that are around you. And you know the biggest thing in life that brings peace is when you are a blessing to somebody else. Oh, that we could understand that we're here, mm -hmm. not for ourselves, but to be a blessing to somebody else. Father, thank you for this time that we've had today. Lord, um, I know that this message is scattered. And I know, Lord, that uh, I failed in a lot of ways. But I ask God that you would bless my ignorance right now. Father, I ask that the Holy Ghost of God would do what I can and that is take this message to the very hearts of the individuals that need it the most. Lord, whether they be in this building, or out in radio land, or watching us by way of YouTube. Oh, God, I pray that this, that this message today would touch those that need it most. And Father, would you help us, Lord, just to get where we need to be. Father, I still believe that you have a blessing for America. I still believe that you have revival for America. Lord, I know that you love us, and I know Amen. that you care for us. 
And Father, I know that it's your will that good things come in our life. Oh God, help us to see what we really need to do today to get those blessings, to be that blessing. And Lord, to be a child of God that be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.